Glendale Cemetery in Akron, Ohio is a peaceful and picturesque garden of statues, mausoleums, and historic monuments. This serene landscape near downtown has been the final resting place for many of the city's notable historic figures for nearly two centuries. In the early morning hours of June in 1977, this quiet area was awakened with a jolt. A powerful explosion threw manhole cover several feet in the air, destroyed the entire main drive of the cemetery, and woke the community for miles around. Today we look back at the explosion in Glendale Cemetery that nearly claimed four lives and cost the city tens of millions of dollars. So if you're curious, let's take a walk through history. Thursday, June 23rd, 1977 is a day that the Warren family wouldn't soon forget. Glendale Cemetery Superintendent Fritz Warren and his family were asleep in the caretaker's home. Fritz, his wife Paula, and two children, seven-year-old Lisa and three-year-old Jennifer, were about to experience one of the scariest moments of their lives. At 2.20 a.m., the cemetery's main drive exploded in a singular, catastrophic blast, shattering the windows of the caretaker's home and the cemetery office building, and even damaging the priceless stained glass windows of the Civil War Memorial Chapel. This was a massive explosion, throwing large chunks of debris in all directions, shaking the ground for nearly 30 seconds, and sending a sonic blast in all directions strong enough to nearly wake the dead. Fritz and Paula were thrown from their beds, terrified. They were stunned and their ears were ringing, but they knew they had to get to their children. They grabbed each other and ran to the girls' bedroom to find them crying, but thankfully uninjured. Then the family gazed in horror at the disastrous upheaval just feet away from the house's front entrance. The cemetery drive between their home and the cemetery office had been completely obliterated and was now replaced by a deep trench with a rushing stream. Fritz would describe the scene as a crater big enough to drive a truck through. Let's talk for a moment about the sound of the explosion. It must have been overwhelming for the family. It was heard for miles and woke people from their slumber for at least a two mile radius. To wake someone from a deep sleep 2.20 a.m., two miles away. Uh, the sound must have been incredible. Imagine the loudest sound you've ever heard in your life. For me, there are two things that come to mind. The Rush concert Little John and I went to in 2007, and standing 100 yards away from a hovering Harrier jump jet at the Cleveland National Air Show. In that order. Now consider hearing those sounds in an instant, unexpectedly, in the quiet of the night. The confusion, the fear, it, it would be so disorienting and frightening. Now imagine how it was for the Warren family here at Ground Zero, where the blast originated. They must have thought the world was coming to an end. So why was the drive now an open trench with rushing water? The answer to that question is quite simple and would be our first step in understanding what happened that night. You see, when Glendale was commissioned in 1839, there was no main road here. Instead, there was a stream named Willow Brook. The city enclosed the brook in 1920, turning it into a 3,900-foot sewer line running between West Market and West Exchange Streets. But after the explosion, the brook-slash-sewer line was exposed to the elements. It was a billowing bluish-white toxic smoke. Fritz had to work quickly to get his family out of the house and out of the cemetery to relative safety. Not only were the windows blown out of the caretaker's house and the office, but the foundations to both buildings had become noticeably compromised. Couple that with the confusion of what just happened and not knowing if it would happen again, well, time was of the essence. 
and they didn't even waste a moment to call the police. Fritz didn't need to worry about calling for help. The police were well aware that something catastrophic occurred. In fact, you could say they had first-hand knowledge. You see, at the same time that the Warren family had been rocked from their slumber, Mike Akers and Charles Fournier from the Akron Police Department were in their cruiser parked near the back entrance of the cemetery when they too found themselves in the midst of a disaster. The explosion wasn't located just at the main entrance of the cemetery. In fact, it ran the entire length of the cemetery drive from the front gate to the location at the rear entrance, causing several craters to form in pockets down the drive. One of those craters that formed here was nearly 30 feet wide and 12 feet deep. The officers recalled ducking when they heard the blast. Fournier was the driver and instinctively floored the accelerator, but the car didn't move. The blast had lifted the rear of the vehicle three feet in the air, thus no traction. When the rear wheels finally hit pavement, the car bolted down Exchange Street, narrowly missing the crater. At this point, nobody had an understanding of what happened. This situation was almost unbelievable, like something you would see in a movie. There were several areas within Glendale Cemetery that had exploded, the worst of which were at the front entrance and at the back entrance. Two buildings were practically lifted from their foundations. The main cemetery drive was obliterated. The $100,000 stained glass windows of the Memorial Chapel were seriously damaged but not a single mausoleum or grave was disturbed. It was clear to the emergency personnel that arrived on scene that the problem was contained to the sewer, but they still didn't know what the problem was or if it would happen again. So authorities decided that evacuating homes closest to the explosion area was best for public safety. In all, 70 homes were evacuated. Officers went door to door clearing residents using police wagons, cruisers, ambulances, buses, and cars. Some residents went to stay with friends or relatives. Others would shelter at the Akron Armory, not knowing when they would be allowed to return to their homes or if they would have a home to return to. The residents who felt the blast described their experience to local news outlets as the sensation of an earthquake that lasted around 30 seconds or possibly a bomb going off. Many described seeing manhole covers displaced on their streets and bluish smoke coming from the storm drains. It was the smoke that had investigators most concerned. Not only did authorities have to deal with the present situation of evacuating residents and assessing damage from the explosion, they also had to determine what caused the blast. Their answer came as the sun rose that morning from a location almost four miles away. This is the former site of Patch Rubber Company on Waterloo Road in Akron. That morning, Lewis Myers, then president of the company, called the authorities to report a break-in at the plant. Whomever broke in propped open some valves that released 3,000 gallons of petroleum naphtha and isopropyl alcohol onto the plant floor and into the storm drains that emptied into the city sewer system. This was no accident. The vandals knew exactly where to go in the plant and exactly what to do. Wrenches jammed valves open, releasing the chemicals from their containers. These highly flammable liquids flowed toward downtown, entered the sewer system and reached the sewer trunk line at the cemetery. As the massive trunk line filled with chemicals, vapor began to rise from the storm drains on the street. It is speculated that the catalytic converter from the idling police cruiser on West Exchange may have caused the explosion. I think it's more likely that a discarded cigarette was the culprit. Either way though, the authorities now knew how the blast occurred. They were able to formulate a plan to combat the spill, making sure no other explosions would follow. The Akron Fire Department was dispatched to the plant and diluted the chemicals by pumping 500 gallons of water a minute into the storm drains leading to the sewer. 
After roughly five hours of pumping, it was deemed safe for the residents to return to their homes, although many residents were cautious and waited until the following day to return. Akron police detectives were now tasked with figuring out who the culprits were that broke into the patch plant and dumped the chemicals. The answer seemed to lead to a labor dispute at the tire repair plant. Teamsters Local 348 had been striking at the plant since May 19th. Three two-man teams of detectives interviewed more than 25 union employees and gave several of them lie detector tests during a four-day investigation. The Teamsters Union was very cooperative during the investigation, giving authorities any information that was requested of them, including the schedules of the picketers. It was later found, however, that the striking employees had nothing to do with the situation. The detectives determined that an 18-year-old former employee who was suspended prior to the strike was responsible for the break-in. He pleaded guilty to vandalism and breaking and entering and was sentenced to 20 years at the Mansfield Reformatory. Oddly enough, he only served 60 days before receiving shock parole. 60 days for causing a disaster that would cost millions and almost kill four people? Well, for me, something doesn't quite add up. Life in and around the cemetery didn't return to normal for quite some time. Scheduled burials were delayed for more than a week. Portions of West Cedar and West Exchange remained blocked for nearly two years until those roads could be repaired and resurfaced. And several businesses up and down West Exchange Street suffered damage in the blast, as well as lost revenue. In all, the damages from the explosion totaled just north of 12 million dollars. That would be equal to 59 million dollars today. In May of 1978, a three million dollar sewer line project paid for by city, state, and federal funds began at Glendale Cemetery. Heavy machinery was brought in to dredge the ditch, divert the water, grade the soil, install concrete culverts, add reinforcement beams, bury the line, and pave a new drive through the cemetery. The project lasted more than a year. The fact that the explosion happened at 2.20 in the morning was obviously inconvenient for the community who was so abruptly awakened that day, but in fact, the timing was a godsend. Mr. Warren would sum it up nicely, saying if it had to happen, it happened at a good time. My kids play out there in the daytime and funeral processions come through there too. I've never heard anything that loud in my life. Thank God no one was hurt. Anything else can be repaired or replaced. In September of 1979, traffic returned to normal on West Exchange. Calm was restored at the cemetery and the occupants of Glendale could finally rest in peace. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time as we explore more curious history. Take care.